Today in studio, we have Josh Witten. Witten, correct. Uh, he is our resident expert on autophagy, and there's some contention as to how that's pronounced. What was the alternative pronunciation, Josh? Autophagy. So there's a there's a there's <laughs> a war so raging good. in in the world of um, intracellular recycling, and among the eight people who who use this word. So, <laughs> but we so we know how to use both, and we'll just we'll just we'll just intermittently uh, switch between the two of them. So no snobbery out there in the autophagy world, please. Okay, that works. I, I'm going to stick with autophagy. Cool. I'm going to cop a British accent and say autophagy. 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 All right. So, um. So how was the life extension conference? That's why I was just. (laughs) I got there first. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Personalized life extension conference was a really good time. Um, And there were just a lot of great talks and just a lot of great networking. Um, Yeah, it it was, it was really neat. But, you know, part of what I was, um there to do was kind of um bring some some knowledge from the the kind of paleo nutrition world and and where that intersects with the life extension kind of stuff and um one thing that you guys would have noticed had you been there is that um despite all the talk about um life extension technologies and different dietary strategies uh I say most people were in awful shape. Actually, Bro. you ever been to a conference like that on health and uh, people? I are, believe that. <laughs> yeah, people are in bad that's, shape. <laughs> that's not abnormal. Where they're worried about their C protein levels and they're just obese. Exactly right. It's... We're just bio track, <laughs> you know, tracking all these numbers, and it's just like you know, your the mirror test is uh, very inexpensive. Right. Can be performed at home. Let's take care of the elephant in the room, right. almost literally, and then we'll start worrying about the minutia. Right, and I'm not talking about. Um, people just excessively wafy because they're they're doing crazy calorie restriction there are actually few few cr practitioners from what i could observe and uh, a lot of metabolic derangement so i <laughs> um, would love to you know a lot of people who want to do what's right and i think that um they just are really uh hurting for some some good nutrition knowledge and fitness knowledge so do you think also they're kind of just waiting for the magic pills i think that's true as well and and um this is my first life extension conference before that i was mostly just on forums and uh and reading the literature out there and i'd see the comments at the end of all these articles and people were just yeah just really almost indignant that whatever the whatever the article was about that some sort of meager gain in life extension could come from you know fitness or nutrition and and the comments were just really indignant about when are they gonna when is the nanobot gonna go through and replace my telomere and and i'm imagining that everybody who's making these comments are just they're just in great shape and they just want more and really (laughs) they're just waiting for the pill apparently right (laughs) right everybody wants the easy way out why work hard if you can wait for a pill that's going to do it for you. Well, and and the sad thing is that <clears throat> I think what, what you and I have probably figured out is that um, there there is an easier way if you know what you're doing. It's going to be impossibly hard if you don't know. And also, um, the easy way is not always the most fun way. So you guys go and, and throw a bunch of weights around and actually are pretty satisfied with that lifestyle, I imagine. So Yeah, uh, it has its downsides every once in a while. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, it's um, it, it's interesting because... Actually, I forgot where I was going to go with that that line of thought. But, so interesting. We'll yeah, it's so interesting. It just totally blew my mind. Um, <laughs> that's, that's rare. That's so, why we have Josh here in the studio. Yeah. One of the few people that Kiefer can actually have, have an interesting conversation with in this world. Well, let's at least start with what autophagy is, because most of my audience will not know what it is, actually. Yeah, so it's this um, intracellular cleansing process. So inside of the cell, um, there's junk that's floating around junk is the technical term here and uh we're talking about um broken down mitochondria and and other organelles that have been decommissioned and maybe even viruses and things like that just floating around in the cytoplasm not really doing you much good and uh the reason uh if there is one that the body doesn't just clean those those guys up regularly is because these are kind of recyclables that are actually useful and you know the body doesn't have a great protein storage mechanism you know we 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 have fat reserves and whatnot but um you're either gonna have to go to the muscle for protein or luckily um you can you can recycle the protein that's hanging out inside of every cell the junk protein the really unused um um, misfolded proteins and things like that 
and so the the cell uh, can uh, drag that stuff over or through various mechanisms pull that into the lysosome and um, break it down into its uh, essential amino acids and whatnot and use those um, very beneficially and so um, a lot of what I'm my, my interest is in how to induce that process uh, beyond what it normally would be. And also, what it would normally be is probably not going on. So normal in the paleo sense, um, you might have a bit of a nutrient deficiency because the hunt didn't go so well, and then your, um, you know, your, your autophagy processes kick off. And in modern times, um, the hunt is always going well, and we may not be recycling these things very much ever. And that buildup of this junk protein in the cell um, may be one of the, the mechanisms of aging, causes the cell to have to divide more often because the cell, they kind of have to abandon ship and, and it's just, uh, um, or, or create new cells rather, because the, the cell has just, its efficiency has just crashed. So if it can't clean itself up, it's going to go through apoptosis or... Um, what I'm trying to figure out is, let's say the, the autophagy mechanism goes on too long dormant. Uh, is, is the cell basically going to die? Yeah, it's going to have an early death. That's okay. what's going to happen. Um, and also, e even before it flat out dies, its efficiency is terribly uh, reduced. So this is all about having cells that are longer lived and efficient. So what are the conditions under which autophagy never happens? I don't know under the conditions which they, which they never, never happen. Um, and it's, this is a pretty, uh, um, it, it's a frontier that, that, you know, in the, in the life extension community, uh, autophagy or autophagy seems to be uh, a, a major sort of anti-aging mechanism, but we, we don't have a lot of good visibility on how much is normal. And, um, but the, the latest thinking is that, if you never have a nutrient deficiency, even temporarily, um, it's going to be greatly, greatly reduced. Actually, are you familiar with uh, mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not as familiar with as you, though, so go for it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So basically, for autophagy to be triggered at all, the mTOR pathway has to be downregulated or shut down. And essentially, anytime you eat, especially carbohydrates, uh, anytime you have a rise in insulin, or potentially leucine, that gets turned on. Once that's turned on, autophagy gets turned off. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially these recommendations to eat every six hours would shut down the autophagy process yeah. uh, pretty much indefinitely, other than when you sleep. <clears throat> you know, When you sleep, you'd have a chance. Um, that's, that's another thing I've, I've found that ketones, which you probably know, help regulate one of the types. Mm -hmm of autophagy yeah so that's exactly right um it, you know technically there may be uh three types of of autophagy and uh the the one theory is that uh the you know carb restriction can can increase one of them the carrier mediated autophagy and this actually goes into one of your uh, uh listener questions that was posted and then you've got these other other kinds of autophagy called macro and micro autophagy and uh, the, the neat discovery is that um, and we hope this continues to pan out is that it may be that protein restriction uh, triggers those or, or increases those triggers the, the macro, macro and, and micro. micro and the important thing there is that the uh, the macro and micro autophagy are non-selective and so they're just more of a filtering through the cytoplasm, uh, whereas the carrier mediated, these are things that have been marked as damaged. And of course, sometimes the marking uh, doesn't work or, or the, the junk is too large to be hauled by the carrier to the lysosome. And so you have these other kinds of, of autophagy that um, are non-selective and that use another, you know, a different mechanical sort of way of consuming the junk. And so you really, I think the name of the game is to get all three of them going. Right. Um, what would – so let's just step back for a second. The chaperone-mediated autophagy, mm -hmm. that's the one that ketones trigger. That's what and, it looks like, yeah. And that's the one that um, – essentially, I, w I was reading something, and you know, pardon me for not being able to retain all of it, but um, there were pattern recognition molecules they were talking about within the cell. And so what you're saying is the chaperone-mediated 
would recognize those. If it has a recognition pattern, it'll clean up all that mm-hmm, crap. Mm-hmm. But the other stuff, it's it's not going to get cleaned out. You need to activate the macro and micro for that. Yeah. And that's – the macro and micro, I – actually, I, I didn't find anything on the micro, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest. The macro mm-hmm. seemed to be as well studied as this is at all. Um, and yeah, and I was – yeah. It, it, it's It's amazing how – uh, I, I say that a lot. It's not really that amazing, but because it happens all the time, these there's this frontier of information, and you can do so much with it, and and the rest is speculation, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is a shame because they've got. It, it appears that they have several new tools to actually witness some of these autophagic processes mm-hmm. in the cells, yeah. and they're just not utilized that heavily. There's one or two studies that describe the methods, and then no other studies that implement the methods. Yep. So it's it was frustrating going through the research trying to make these connections because you got this great we can see this we can see how this happens we can recognize this process and then that's it uh, nobody references the paper nobody's apparently using the method right and it's curious how long will that take before we get a good handle on this because yeah. you know autophagy seems to be involved in everything from cancer growth and and stopping cancer growth. Uh, to brain health, neuro, neural plasticity, mm-hmm. you know, so it's not trivial. It's not right. Uh, and you know, the mTOR pathway, the the connection seems very strong there. Mm-hmm. Once it's upregulated, you really don't have any, at least of the chaperone mediated. There seemed to be no stimulation of autophagy at that point if mTOR stimulated. So, for example, right. after you exercise, mTOR is up upregulated, and autophagic process is shut off unless there's a problem with basically if you have some sort of metabolic problem you could actually i was reading something about uh, if you upregulate reactive reactive oxygen species high enough so example a totally devastating metabolic workout that that can actually circumvent the mTOR upregulation and trigger autophagy Mm. but this was an autophagic process that they called strictly catabolic and not beneficial Hmm. um and and i'm just wondering your thoughts on that like it it kind of reminds me a little bit at the moment like uh what was his name the zone diet creator yeah Yeah, very very serious serious. he ran down that road of the eicosanoid and i don't know if i'm even saying that correctly uh trying to trigger different eicosanoid production for different avenues of health. And he said, if you eat this fat, you get this, these eicosanoid levels to go up right. and, and they make you leaner. Well, it turns out he got everything wrong. Mm. The actual ones that he was increasing production of made you fatter, right. made your cells more efficient at storing fat. <clears throat> and so I'm just wondering how you feel about the, the state of autophagy at the moment. Oh, yeah. Well, why are you laughing, Naomi? Because that was a question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a big question because... <laughs> Sorry. No, I can it's run okay. with that. It's okay. I, I'm just ragging. I can, I can, I can receive that as a question. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the the amount of research is is really unsatisfying, and um, at the same time, it's intriguing enough to do some. Um, some common, not common sense, but to do some things that are, are not all that arduous. So, for example, um, you run into folks doing a full-on calorie restriction, which there is a lot of good evidence that that has life <clears throat> life extending. Just for the benefits of the podcast, what, what do you mean by full-on calorie restriction? Right. I mean folks who um, are uh, humans who are, 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 you know, restricting their, their calories from what person would theoretically normally eat if we we don't even know what that means though because we're surrounded by not normal food but but whatever and so uh theoretically if you if you restrict your caloric intake from you know 20 to 30 percent of what you would normally or naturally eat uh that it can extend life dramatically and in in rodents this in a lot of animals this seems to be true and of course uh, the only reason that testing in humans is so inadequate is because we live so long so we outlive you know most of the studies and, and whatnot uh, but if you if you take rats and and feed them uh, 30% less there's a, a good chance that they could live 
thirty percent longer or thirty five percent longer or something like that, and also not just be decrepit in old age, but actually you've you've slowed the aging process so that 